In this video, I'm going to explain how the self-adjusting clutch cable mechanism works and how to adjust it, or should I say how to check it for proper operation in a 2002 Mustang GT. Now, the explanation will actually work for any Mustang with a cable operated clutch that uses an automatic quadrant prior to 2005. 2005, uh, Mustang switched over to a uh, hydraulic system. So, uh, here we go. Uh, we have a clutch pedal. We have clutch pedal lever, the clutch pedal shaft, the clutch pedal shaft lever, a pole, which is attached to the clutch pedal shaft lever with a pin and is held in place with an R clip that goes through this hole at the end of the shaft. And it is spring loaded with a torsion spring that forces or puts tension on between the pole and the clutch pedal shaft lever and forces the pole forward against the teeth of the quadrant. Now, the clutch pedal lever and the clutch pedal shaft lever are rigidly attached to the clutch pedal shaft. And they're not actually, it is drawing they appear to be in the same plane, but actually the clutch pedal lever is uh, angled back and the clutch pedal lever is angled forward. So uh, uh, they are angled away from each other and permanently held in that angular relationship on the shaft. So they don't move relative to each other. They, are, they move in conjunction with the shaft. So they're basically solid to the shaft. Now, moving on to the quadrant. Uh, four calls of the quadrant. Um, a quadrant would be a quarter of a circle. Uh, it's actually more like a third of a circle. And even though the strong is not the scale, not proportional, uh, it, the actual quadrant is uh, more than a quarter of a circle. So it's basically a semicircle, but four calls of the quadrant. So that's what we call it, quadrant. Okay, the quadrant is made out of plastic. This, uh, this is the hub of the quadrant. It's integral. It's a part of the quadrant, molded with the quadrant. Um, uh, at this end, we have a, uh, a hook or a cable retainer. And that, too, is a molded part of the quadrant, integral to the quadrant. Um, I have a torsion spring that fits over the hub. The cable has a swaged end that fits into the cable retainer and held in place. And the cable fits in a groove that is grooved on the uh, perimeter of the quadrant. At the lower portion of the quadrant are teeth that engage with the pole. Now, the quadrant is drawn in this draw drawing, disassembled, but for so you can see it better. But uh, the actual way the quadrant would be uh, in if it was installed and would be if you look at my hand, the palm of my hand, and the quadrant was drawn on the palm of my hand, we would turn it this way and slide the hub over the shaft. And then the teeth of the quadrant would then engage with the teeth of the pole. The quadrant would be held in place by an R clip. There is no washer between the R clip and the hub. Uh, that's how it comes from the factory. Just a retaining clip, an R clip. And the torsion spring bears against this stop that is uh, molded into the quadrant. And the other end of the torsion spring is bent at a 90 degree angle. This end of the torsion spring connects or goes into this hole on the clutch pedal shaft lever. So the clutch pa uh, the quadrant um, is able to rotate 
under this spring tension of this torsion spring when the pole is released. You then, uh, the, the quadrant is then free to rotate independently of the shaft, independently of these two uh, levers, uh, when the pole is released from the teeth of the quadrant. It can then rotate um, under the tension of this torsion spring. And that is the, um, that's key to the, uh, how the quadrant uh, sets the preload of the throwout bearing. All right, uh, now the way it works uh, is that this end of the cable, as I said, is attached to the quadrant. The other end of the cable is attached down here at the clutch. Here's a clutch that is removed, you know, not removed, this is a new clutch that hasn't been installed yet. Um, here's your clutch. Uh, this is your, the whole, the whole assembly is referred to as the uh, pressure plate, but actually the pressure plate itself, let me get over here. The pressure plate itself is right here. This surface here, this ring is the pressure plate. This is the clutch cover. This is your diaphragm spring. Um, this is your throw out bearing. Throw out bearing sits on top of the fingers and is designed to always be in contact with the uh, diaphragm fingers um, and the amount of pressure that's exerting on those diaphragm fingers is the net tension of that torsion spring. And let me show you here, I have another drawing because even though I got the actual components, the drawing makes it a little bit easier to follow me. Okay, so, because I don't have all the components here. Um, but here, here we go, here are the uh, diaphragm fingers. I've just, it's a cross section, I've just shown two fingers. Here is the release bearing. And here is your throw out fork. And your ball pivot stud. Ball pivot stud is mounted to the transmission. Uh, here at the end of the th throw out fork is a hole a keyhole that the swaged end of the clutch cable uh, fits into. So the clutch cable is permanently or rigidly attached to this uh, throwout fork. At this point, there is a uh, clutch cable sheath retainer, and there's your clutch cable sh sheath. So that's how your clutch cable is attached ultimately to the thrust bearing. Now the thrust, the diaphragm fingers um, are exerting pressure on throw out bearing, which in turn is exerting uh, tension, putting tension on this cable, putting tension in the cable here, which is held back by the other end of the cable on the quadrant. And how that now, that's how the tension, the, the amount of tension in this cable, uh, amount of tension in the cable is determined by this torsion spring when you release the pull. And so just to reiterate, the clutch cable is connected at, at both ends. One end is connected is, is the at the quadrant, the other end is at the throw-out fork. When you release the pull, uh, and the way the pull releases is when the clutch pedal is pulled all the way up, the pull hits a stop on the pedal box and it pushes the pull back against the spring pressure, uh, the torsion spring that, that's on here, and pushes, re, re, uh, disengages the teeth of the pole 
from the teeth of the quadrant and allows this quadrant now to rotate freely independently of this shaft and, 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 and in turn these uh, levers. And now what will happen when that does that is it will impart the, t the net force, the net tension of this spring to the cable. And that will set up the preload tension, the preload pressure of this thrust bearing against the diaphragm fingers. Because right here at this clutch cable here, we're pulling back this way, but by that quadrant with the tension of that torsion spring. And it applies that uh, tension uh, through this lever and pivots that way so that your throw out bearing is pushed against your diaphragm. And it's not a lot of pressure, it's just enough pressure to keep that in a firm contact. There's really not enough pressure to uh, reduce the clamping force in any way of your pressure plate. And that's how your, that's the amount of tension your clutch cable should have in it when your clutch is in the fully up position. And now to further explain here on the clutch cover, I'll explain how your, your, your clutch works. Now, this is an uninstalled clutch. Uh, this is your diaphragm, clutch cover, and again, your pressure plate right here. And this pressure plate goes against here in a plastic bag here is your friction disc. So the pressure plate goes against the friction disc, friction disc goes against the flywheel, and then this gets bolted to the flywheel. Now when that happens, you compress the diaphragm spring. The diaphragm spring is actually a bevel spring that has slots in it. And uh, it pivots, these fingers actually pivot at these points of uh, these rivet locations here, you have uh, uh, basically pivot points, if you can see in there, that those levers, those fingers pivot on. So when, when this clutch gets installed, you compress that spring and when this, and, and that, and thereby establish your, um, your clutch, your clutch spring pressure, the, uh, uh, the, the holding force of the clutch, the clamping force is established by that spring. Uh, so the compressor, the, the, the clutch plate has a certain, the friction plate has a certain thickness. And when you, uh, screw this to, uh, tighten this down to your flywheel, the clutch uh, friction plate is sandwiched between the pressure plate and the flywheel and uh, compresses this spring and these fingers are going to go down. And actually, when this clutch gets installed, it's a new clutch, so the fingers will be even with the top of this cover, or they should be, unless it's defective. And um, they will... Uh, be even with, so they'll, they'll come up to just underneath this stick. They'll be even or slightly below the cover when it's installed. So when it's installed, your, your, this spring is compressed. Um, and it's compressed, not fully compressed. It can compress more than that. And it has to compress more than that in order for it to release the clutch. But it's compressed to the point that it needs to be to establish the rated um, clamping force of the clutch. And in order to release it, what has to happen is the release bearing has to compress the spring even further so that the spring pulls away, so that the pressure plate pulls away from the friction disc, allowing uh, the friction disc to rotate freely, and that independent of the flywheel. 
and that is how you release your clutch. So yes, that's something to bear in mind, that this spring is always under tension. Um, that's how it's supposed to be. And the diaphragm spring. And when you want to release the clutch, you're actually compressing the spring further in order to release the clutch. So it takes, a, and that's why it takes a considerable amount of force to press your clutch pedal down. Uh, you know, I mean, it, you have to overcome the spring tension. Now, as the clutch wears, these fingers of the diaphragm actually come forward. And as these fingers come forward, they, they push back on the release bearing uh, and uh, increase the tension on the release bearing, on the, on the clutch cable, and, and the, but the clutch pedal can only go up so far. It only goes up to the, to the top of its travel. So as the clutch cable wears, uh, I mean, as the as as the friction plate, as the friction disc wears, your uh, your thrust bearing needs to be adjusted back to compensate for that. Otherwise, um, you'll get slippage eventually, and that's where this um, automatic uh, quadrant comes into play. Now, the thing to remember is you always want to maintain when the clutch, the proper adjustment is for this throw, throw out bearing to have the tension of the net tension of this torsion spring. So the force on the pressing against, force of this throw out bearing pressing against these fingers should be the net tension of this torsion spring. And that is established when you push down on the clutch pedal, you, uh, when you push up on the clutch pedal, when you, when you pull up on the clutch pedal actually, the pull hits the stop on the pedal box and releases it from these teeth and allows this quadrant to move independently of the shaft. And what it's gonna do is if if this if if such is the case, if it's a if it's if the friction disc has worn to the point that this spring is exerting force, any amount of force, a force greater than this torsion spring was, once that pole is disengaged, it's just going to go right back. It's going to go right back to the weaker spring, which is this torsion spring. Torsion spring is by far weaker than the uh, diaphragm spring. So it's just going to equalize back out to and impart only the tension of this uh, torsion spring. And then when you let go of, uh, when you let, uh, push down on the clutch, the teeth will re-engage. And when the teeth re-engage, this spring no longer is in operation because now um, it, the teeth are engaged to the uh, pole. The pole is connected to your clutch pedal shaft lever, which is rigidly attached to the clutch shaft. So it's it. It's now this quadrant behaves as if it is rigidly attached to this clutch uh, shaft. Um, and there, uh, and the spring doesn't do anything when the pole is engaged. The spring is now is no longer uh, affecting anything, and that is your tension on your clutch cable. And it automatically sets uh, will uh, um, make adjustments for it. Even if, for instance, if the clutch cable were to stretch. Um, you would then, uh, you would actually have slack in your cable. And there would be less tension in what this torsion spring is imparting. Well, if you pull up on the clutch pedal, releases the pole, this will spring up until the torsion spring uh, imparts its tension, uh, full tension on, uh, on this uh, cable, which in turn, again, 
go uh, tra uh, transmits down to the release bearing. So it's it's that simple. If, again, when the clutch pedal wears, it pushes on the uh, it pushes up against the uh, uh, release bearing. As in this drawing here, they will push up against this thrust bearing, pulling back on this cable, increasing the tension on the clutch cable. Uh, and again, in that case, how will it adjust? The, when you pull the pedal up, the uh, pull will hit a stop on the pedal box and release the teeth of the pole from the teeth of the quadrant, allowing the quadrant to rotate under the spring tension and it will allow the cable to uh, re re relieve the tension to the point of this torsion spring. So whether the cable stretches or whether the cable gets tighter as a result of wear of the friction plate, uh, this uh, quadrant will always put it back when it went, uh, to the tension, set it to the tension of the torsion spring. And that is how the setup works, and that is how um, the, it's supposed to be. The tension on this, the preload on this bearing is the net tension of that uh, torsion spring. And yeah, and why, why I keep on saying net tension is because obviously the, um, the leverage here of the uh, quadrant and the leverage on the fork would be added to the, uh, uh, the tension of this torsion spring. And the friction in this cable sheath would be subtracted so you know you add that the leverage uh, of, of the system you subtract the friction of the uh, uh, cable sheath and you get a net uh, tension that ultimately gets to this thrust bearing and that is uh, the factory preload the preload that this uh, release bearing here is designed to ride against the fingers of the diaphragm. So that's it. That's how it works. That's how it's supposed to work. There is no free play. It's not supposed to have any air gap it, between the uh, draw out bearing and the fingers. It's supposed to ride against the, uh, the, the fingers. It is designed to spin at all times. But not with too much pressure. And that's what that spring does. That spring gives it just the right amount of tension against these fingers. Uh, if it wasn't for that spring, as it wore, the pressure would increase because uh, the fingers would come out and you'd be putting a, a, a greater uh, uh, thrust force on this bearing, causing it to wear out faster. But eventually, not only that, that you'd get to a point where um, you would actually be putting too much, uh, you would be actually not allowing the spring to um, fully release against the pressure plate and you, you, would, you would start getting slippage and, it would be, uh, and you'd have rapid clutch wear. So that is why you need an automatic adjuster or if you didn't have an automatic adjuster, you have to periodically um, adjust your cable, uh, relieve the tension as the, as the friction plate wears, or increase the tension as your clutch cable stretches. Now, another thing to point out is that this pull and this ratchet and this uh, quadrant are not a ratchet setup. It's a pull and drive gear setup, not ratcheting. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, they hear the word pull, they automatically think ratchet. No, we don't want it to ratchet. This, and that's why it's not that way. It's also simpler. But when uh, on a ratcheting setup, the teeth of uh, the pull are angled in such a way that in one direction, uh, they, they, they'll, they'll, 
skip past the teeth. And that's that ratcheting sound you hear in a ratchet. And in the other direction, they'll solidly engage. Um, and that's how a ratchet works. Um, and you, uh, if in case of a ratchet wrench, it has a, a, a lever that switches the direction of the angle of the teeth of the pole to the opposite direction and allows it to ratchet in the opposite way. But this is not a ratcheting system. This pole does not ratchet. These teeth, when they're under spring tension, um, never move or can't, can't skip past the teeth. The only way this quadrant can rotate relative to this pole is if the pole actually disengages. And we went over how that happens. So, how do you check if it, your quadrant is working properly? Well, Ford, first thing Ford tells you to do is to check your clutch, clutch pedal. And I'm going to editorialize here a little bit. That, that check they tell you to do is absolutely bogus and a waste of time. And I'll show you why. Here's your clutch pedal lever, and it is attached to the end of the clutch pedal shaft with a nut. And here I, I, I drew a magnified uh, detail of, the, here's the end of the clutch pedal shaft, and what you have here is a turn down section with two flats, the same thickness as the thickness of the clutch pedal lever. And then you have a further re uh, turn down uh, part of the shaft that is threaded. And the clutch pedal shaft in turn has a hole that has two flats in it that fits over your clutch pedal shaft. And you simply put it, it simply sits over there and is tightened down with the nut and that holds it tight against this face of the uh, shaft, which maintains the proper distance so that you're not pushing too hard on your bearings. It sets up the right clearance and it holds it in place from wiggling around. It doesn't really do much to prevent it from rotating. Uh, the, the torque, it's supposed to be torqued down to 30 foot pounds, that nut. Now, uh, it's about, this, this threaded section is about 13 millimeter diameter. The takes an 18 millimeter, the nut takes an 18 millimeter wrench. So, you know, it just, uh, but it's only supposed to be torqued down to 34 pounds going forward. Now, what they tell you to do, which is why I'm going through all this details, I'm gonna, is to, what they tell you to do is to pull back, is to loosen up this nut. First thing they tell you to do when you're checking your clutch is to loosen up this nut and pull back on the clutch pedal and then retighten the nut to 30 foot pounds. So what they're telling you to do basically is to put the backlash in. They're saying, you know, there is, uh, this isn't a press fit, so there's a clearance here. And they're saying to pull back on this, this clutch pedal, which in effect is going to um, pull back till it takes out any play in the difference between this hole and, and, and this uh, uh, stulp, this flattened out section, between the flats, between the flats of the hole and the flats of this uh, shoulder. And that's what they're telling you to do, and then retighten out the nut. You go ahead and do that. When you press down on the clutch pedal again, after you've talked it down to 34 pounds, it's gonna, you, you, you're gonna remove the backlash. It's just gonna, ro it's gonna rotate, the, the clutch pedal lever is gonna rotate relative to the shaft until it hits, uh, until it, it takes up the, uh, that, that clearance and be back in the original position it was in when you first loosened the nut, uh, before you loosened the nut the first time. So it's a waste of time. I don't even know why they wrote that. Um, you know, it's maybe to keep the guys busy, but it's a totally pointless thing to do. Uh, all right, that's that. So let's skip that. Um, I wouldn't even bother with that step. The next step they tell you to do is to pull up on the clutch pedal, 
and uh, and then check that your quadrant isn't binding. And that's what they tell you. And, you know, if you're familiar with the how it works, you know what they're talking about. But now that I just went over everything, now you know what to do. And the way you check to see if that quadrant is binding, again, you pull up on the clutch pedal, you get underneath the car, and you look at and you'll see this quadrant, this the pole released from the teeth. Then you can take your finger. There's actually, I didn't draw it, there's actually a little extension here where you can actually put your finger. And you can push this quadrant up and all you'll be, uh, the resistance you'll be getting is the spring tension of this torsion spring. And you'll actually see, uh, actually not push it up, you're gonna pull it down. Push it up, you'd be, you'd be trying to activate the clutch and you'd have to have really strong fingers to do that. So um, my mistake there, you pull back, you, you would pull the uh, uh, quadrant forward, uh, causing the quadrant to go in this direction and thereby being uh, you'll feel the tension of this torsion spring because you've did the, the clutch the pole is disengaged and at that point you'll actually see when you pull back on this quadrant you'll see this cable end come free of this retainer hook you'll see that so there'll be absolutely no tension in that cable as a matter of fact you could then easily remove the cable if you wanted to at that point. Um, but that's pretty much how you check it for proper operation. If, you know, if the, if the uh, pole releases and you're able to move that uh, quadrant, um, you know that it's working properly. At that point also, you can uh, inspect your teeth, make sure you have no, uh, none of your teeth are chipped or broken, and that's it. If it's moving freely with that spring, um, your adjustment's good. Uh, and then you just, all you have to do is you let, uh, just simply let go of the clutch pedal and it re-engages with the optimum tension. And your clutch is set. That's all there is to it. That's it. Now, one other thing is that if uh, you, you have... Uh, replaced your quadrant with an aftermarket quadrant, it really doesn't change anything all that much, except for the fact that now you have to manually adjust your clutch as it wears and initially. So what would you do? Well, you have to have some kind of means of adjustment on there. Either, I mean, generally they either have two positions for, there might be two positions on the quadrant. There'll be an aluminum quadrant, won't have a spring, but they'll have two positions on that quadrant that, uh, um, you would attach to. And the other, uh, and then somewhere on the, uh, usually on the firewall, you'll have a, a tensioning device. And what you would do is you would simply uh, increase the tension on the cable or decrease the tension on the cable. Or first, well, actually what you should do is decrease the tension on the cable till you get some play in your quadrant and, and you and, and you won't want to fail with your pedal because it's hard to tell on the pedal if you're starting to put pressure on the spring or not what you want to do is you'd want to feel that tension on the cable so you would simply uh decrease the pressure till you you had till you had some play in the cable then you would just increase the tension till you had absolutely no play just to the point where you have absolutely no play so you're just to the point where this uh, throw out bearing is bearing against the friction plate. And that's it. And, you know, just give it a slight amount of tension. Yeah, and that's something you just have to judge. A lot of people say five pounds, and that's, that's about right. Um, the, remember, it's the, what you want to emulate is the tension that this torsion spring would impart on the cable. It's just enough tension to keep this coil spring, I mean, to keep this uh, throw out bearing against the fingers of this clutch. And, and that's it. And that's the optimum amount. No, no air gap and keep that. And as it wears, you will have to, you know, your, your tension is going to increase. You're going to have to back off on the, uh, on the cable. And, you know, there are people that want to change their clutch pedal height. 
and they think they can change the clutch pedal height by installing one of those aftermarket uh, quadrants. And you can, I suppose, but how are you going to change the clutch pedal height? You can certainly make your clutch pedal closer to the floor if that's what you want by giving it an air gap. It's not going to really hurt your car if you give it an air gap. You just have more travel on your pedal, but you might not get full release, and then it is going to wear out your clutch faster. Um, if, uh, if you want your pedal to be higher, then you're going to have to actually force the uh, release bearing further against the fingers, and when you do that, you're going to, the, you're going to start reducing your clamping force because you're compressing the spring further and um, uh, pulling it away from the friction plate. So, in essence, the torsion spring and the automatic uh, quadrant pretty much sets up your clutch pedal height at its optimum position because that's where you want to be. Um, and the, the clutch release height is determined by the geometry of the system. It, you can't adjust a custom uh, release height. It, it, it's going to be, and it has to be, when the clutch pedal is just in contact with those fingers. Uh, uh, putting, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the tension of the torsion spring against those fingers. And that's it. That's what it's supposed to be. If you try to make it any different, you know, we, you're going to run into problems. Now, of course, you put a high-performance clutch in or a different style clutch, your, your release point might be different, but still, um, you, you don't want to ever have that... Uh, you know, you're not going to want to have these these fingers uh, depressed because if you start to, you know, you, you want them at just at the point of contact, not less, you know, and, and uh, not more. Like I say, the only way, the only position that you can adjust um, and not sacrifice uh, your clamping force would be to give you more uh, clutch pedal travel have bring your clutch pedal closer to the floor and fine provided that you're still able to get full release because if you don't get full release if you know you know if you decrease if you give yourself an air gap well, you have that much more travel and your clutch pedal might hit the floor before you get full release so that's just something to bear in mind if you think it's you know uh a Aftermarket clutch quadrant is going to allow you to have a different pedal height. Not necessarily. You know, the pedal height is pretty much determined by the geometry of your, uh, the, the, the linkage and your pressure plate itself are what determine the clutch pedal height. All right. That's pretty much it.